Hello everyone, this is Sue from Sue's Paper Creations. My name is Sue Phillip and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. And today I wanted to bring you a very quick and beautiful card using our new Springtime Foils Designer Series Specialty Paper, which is one of the free items for celebration that started um, in the second release on February the 16th. Now this beautiful card was actually designed by, let's see here, I do have it, Monica Gale is the first um, person that I saw creating a beautiful ombre effect with this beautiful paper. Um, she used uh, three different colors. Today I'm just going to keep it um, simple and I'm going to use one color and I'm going to show you how you can vary, use a variation in shades with just one color. And she did a slightly lighter flower as well and I wanted to go a little bolder. So this is my little version of it and I'm going to share it with you today. So first of all I'll just show you the papers that you get in the springtime foils specialty paper uh, when you earn it for free with a $60 order um, these are the papers that are in it so they're absolutely beautiful and you can color them you can um, spritz them brayer them so we're going to do some brayering and coloring today there is uh, beautiful roses or flowers and it's, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it has a shimmer of, of a rose gold in there. We're gonna use this polka dotted piece today. Uh, there's also a beautiful striped, and I've just brayered actually some blue. I needed to go over that so you can kind of see what that looks like. And then there's also this lovely um, leaf pattern as well. Okay, so those are um, the designs that you get in the package and you do get three of each of the four colors. So you get 12 full sheets, 12 by 12 sheets. And the papers are actually very thick. They're just as thick, if not thicker, than our cardstock. So they're great for making 3D projects as well. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in the pieces for this card. And it's real simple. I have just got a card base of Whisper White. And then I've got one of our um, pieces of the specialty paper and it is measured uh, three and a half by four and three quarters. So all you need for um, coloring is a piece of the designer series paper and you just basically pick out a flower that you like and a leaf that you like and you're going to color those with your um, stamp and markers. So I'm just going to quickly show you a little bit how to do that. And this is really easy. The one thing you will require is a blender pen. So I do have one of those as well. And you get these in packages of three. They're great for all sorts of coloring, um, blending of whether it is your pencil color, there are watercolor pencils, um, as well as just picking up ink and using ink as well. So they are always in my necessity for my little toolbox. So I'm going to use two colors to blend here. I have a Melon Mambo and I've got a Powder Pink. And this is really simple. You just have to go around the edges. And again, I'm just going to show you just a little bit of this because I've got one already cut out for you. So you guys don't have to um, go through um, watching me color a whole flower here. But I just go over just around the edges a little bit with the darker color and then I want to lay down a little bit of that lighter powder pink in the center and then I just go in with the blender pen and just blend that together so this is how you end up with the colors blended and you end up with the darker around the edge and you've got the lighter towards the center. So again, you can you can add as much dark or as light as you want. You can make this flower whatever shade you want. If you just want a little bit of darker on the tip and then you want the rest of the flower to be quite light, you could do that as well. As you can see, I'm kind of blending it out as I go and there's still enough ink in my blender pen to give a nice light shade so you can go in and add more color if you want darken it up or kind of go light and dark within your flower okay so it's really simple to do you just need one of these blender pens and because of the surface is quite slippery it blends really really easily 
Okay, so I went ahead and I did that. I also um, blended the same way on one of the leaves here using Garden Green and Lemon Lime Twist. And I cut these out for you already. So that is the end result. I've got my flower and I've got my leaf. Okay, so those I'm going to use as um, a centerpiece for my card. So we're going to go back to just this beautiful sheet of paper here and I'm going to show you guys really quick and easy how to do an ombre effect with it. Uh, all you need is, you can do it really any color that you wanted. I'm going with uh, Melon Mambo because I'm going with a darker color I want to be able to kind of layer up and have different shades of pink in this. So it kind of goes dark to light. So I've got my foam brayer and to ink it up I just roll from one edge right to the other because you want even coverage on your foam roller okay I always like to give my foam roller a little roll on a scrap piece of paper here first it just kind of gets rid of all the little speckliness of the color because uh, believe it or not the the foam rollers are little because it's foam it's got all sorts of little tiny tips to it so when you're inking this up on your ink pad it's almost acting like a little, st uh, a little stamp with all of the little marks. So if you just run it on your scrap piece of paper, I hope this makes sense, um, it kind of blends in the pink more into the roller so you get a more blended look rather than a speckled look, okay, which is what we want. So I have got my sheet down here and I'm just going to start at one end and I'm going to start layering just nice and light, nice, nice light touch and I'm going to go over the same area a few times and it's going to darken up and then I'm going to bring my roller, I'm not adding any more ink to it, but I'm just slowly bringing it up the paper and you can see how it's going from dark to light. Now if you wanted, you could also leave the um, top part of this more of a whitish color, like really keep it really white and not put any ink on it. I'm just going to bray over it just a little bit because I want a, just a light shade on it and that way it will pop um, more when it is on the white background. So that is how quick and easy it is. You can see I've got dark to light, I've just used one of one color and one foam roller and it's a matter of just laying down your layers and you always want to start with a light touch and build them up slowly and then you will have this sort of effect. Now because the um, um, foil paper has a slippery surface what you do want to do is you want to just gently rub over the surface after you've brayered it with just a paper towel and the reason why you want to do that is because some, just in case there's a little bit of ink that is laying over the surface of those beautiful um, shimmery dots, that's just going to lift it up and there's just a lot, little bit. You can see I'm getting a very faint amount of ink off of there, but it just brings out the pattern a little bit more. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we have got our layer. So it's just going to be a matter of putting this beautiful card together. I am bringing in some of our um, powder pink shimmer um, ribbon and I love that because it just kind of brings back the light down to the dark like that and I'm going to put that on with a couple of glue dots. So this is the easiest way to attach ribbon is just to use your glue dots. I actually press them right, the ends right onto my um, the glue dot still on the roll and it just lifts it up with it as you can see and then I just pop them down so it's a real easy way to do it and you don't end up with the glue dots all over your fingers which I have done that too okay perfect now as a little kind of bring out a focal piece I have punched out a piece of vellum with just a two and a half inch circle punch and what I've done is I have added two of our little mini dimensions and I've just placed them in the center and the reason why I placed them in the center is so that I'll put this on my piece of 
paper there, there we go, is so that when I place down my flowers here, it's going to actually cover up the dimensions and you don't see them, okay? Because you want to be able to hide that adhesive when it is on the back of vellum. So I'm going to now attach my beautiful flowers that I have colored and cut out. And again, I'm just using some mini dimensions. I love these things, they're perfect. And I'm just gonna lay it down so that I've got my little leaf there. And then I'm gonna put my flower over top. So there we have it, there is the flower and the leaf okay now I'm gonna bring in a little saying here and I'm just I just want to keep it small because I don't want to take away from all the prettiness in the background so I'm just using a little tiny um, happy birthday and this is actually from the picture perfect um, birthday set there's a little tiny happy birthday in there as well as some other beautiful um, oh, that doesn't work out so well let's re-ink that it's because I don't have my foam mat Usually when you're using the photopolymer stamps, you want to have a foam mat underneath it. I'm going to just press a little bit harder here, and hopefully that'll work because I don't want to have to run and get my mat. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so there is my little happy birthday, and I'm going to just cut this. Actually, I might, for this one, I'm going to do a little flag on this end. So to flag it, all I'm going to do is cut down the center. And I'm going to cut corner to center, corner to center, and that way you have a nice um, centered little cut piece if you start in the center like that. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to bring this back in. Now, I am going to go ahead and mount this onto my card base, and I'm going to use just a little bit of liquid Tombow glue. So let's just get that going. And I'm going to put a little bit just in the center of my card base here. And I'm going to place that down in the center, just like that. Perfect. Love it. Okay, and now I'm just going to use just a couple glue dots to place down my little saying here that I've got. There we go, and I'm going to tuck it in so that it just kind of just tucks in. The one edge is just tucked underneath the flower, and it just goes over the edge slightly. So there you have it. This is a very, very quick and easy but beautiful happy birthday card that you can do. And again, this idea came from Monica Gale, so thank you, Monica. Uh, I love the idea, and it is so quick and easy. I wanted to share it with you guys, my little version. So I did a slightly, again, darker flower, and I just used one ink pad, but I used that foam brayer and was able to vary the color just by um, going over the bottom a little bit more and then gradually bringing that brayer up to the top. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, any of the supplies that I use today, other than the beautiful papers, because you earn those for free, but everything else, uh, you can find that on my online store. You just have to go to suephillip.stampinup.net or go through the link on my Facebook page, Sue's Paper Creations, and uh, you'll find everything that you need as well as all other Stampin' Up! products. If you use the February host code, which I have here till the end of the month, I will mail you off a free card kit, and I've got all sorts of different ones here. I just finished making up uh, 40 different card kits, so I mail one of those in the mail for you as a thank you, as well as if your order is over $60, remember you can earn these papers here or any of the other um, celebration items. There's a total of 16 of them now that you can earn, some of them at the $60 mark and a few of them we have at the $120 mark. So check those out, you can earn those and for every $60 you get on my In It To Win It board as well. So hope you guys have a great day and thanks for stopping by. I will see you next time.